On this episode of the Nugget Project, we stop our dashboard being crap. Well hello YouTube, it's been a couple of weeks since the last video. Um, we are still saving up for our roll cage and for the suspension. And as you can tell, we're not at my old man's place working on the Nugget. I'm at my place. So we've got a little project here. I bought the dashboard home for the Nugget. And we're going to do something a little different today. Oh hey look, it's Sal. Hey Sal. It's my little uh, co-mechanic. She's heaps confused why I'm carrying a stick around talking to it. Don't be confused. Anyway, we're going to do something a little different today. We are going to do some flocking. It's not as filthy as it sounds. So what flocking is, is basically it's a way to fix a dashboard. So in a lot of rally cars and race cars, they want to get rid of all the glare on the dash. So uh, you can cover it in suede, you can do all sorts of different things. Um, but the most common and cheapest way is flocking. So what it is, is basically you put down a special type glue and then you have a dust that goes on top of it. Once the dust is glued, you can shake it all off and it leaves you with kind of like a satiny, uh, what's the best way to describe it? It's kind of like a uh, suede-ish sort of finish, but not quite. But basically it gives you zero glare and in our case, it covers up all the crappy parts of the dashboard. So for anyone that owns an XL or has owned an XL, you would know that these dashboards are terrible and they are notorious for cracking, as you can see here. This is actually in pretty good nick for an XL dashboard. Um, but this crack is starting here and it's going all the way up. Uh, there's another one there that is starting to split all the way up. Um, and I think there's another one over here. So the first thing I want to do is basically fix that. So I've got my fiberglass kit and I'm gonna fiberglass on the inside um, where the cracks are and a little bit further just to reinforce it. Uh, it won't add too much weight It will just be a little bit of strengthening and then from there We're going to clean it all up and we're going to have a crack at doing our flocking You want this? You want this? You want this? Go cool. get it Bring it back No, nah, screw you dad. I'm going in your office instead. So when we flip our dashboard over, there's a whole heap of stuff going on here. So these are the standard air vents. We've got uh, that guy there and that goes to the dashboard. So we want to keep that for demisting the windows. And this guy here does our air vents. So this one goes down to where my gauge pods are. And then we've got one here that goes to that side and one that goes to the passenger side or drivers or whatever, which way around it is. So I've done a little bit of design work because that's what I do. Let's put this on a tripod and see if this works. So we're gonna rip all this out. Basically, I don't need that guy. So we get rid of him. And I have designed this guy. So what this does is instead of having uh, a ventilation system go in and go off to all the different vents, I just want it to go to one vent. So this, basically just channels all the air into one vent. So that attaches right up there in the place of the old one. And then we have one pipe that comes out here on the passenger side, and I'm just gonna have a flex pipe here, which I can aim at me when I need to. So in the middle of summer, when I'm sitting on a dummy grid for, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, and it's 40 degrees outside and probably about 55 degrees in the car, I can just crank some fresh air, Blow it through this vent and just point it at my helmet and give me a bit of cold air. Since I've already got the system in there for demisting the windscreen, having this tiny little, very lightweight piece of plastic in there uh, to give me a bit of air circulation, I figure it's well worth it. So why the hell not? Um, we can take this out now. And I've just made those two bits there attach and that screws together and that fits on top of the junction box which I've already tested and it works great. So that is fantastic. Okie dokie gang, so for fiberglassing, I think you saw this, if you saw my older video of fixing the panels on the car, you would have seen what I did, but just in case you didn't, here's what we need. 
First of all, most importantly, rubber gloves. For anybody that hasn't lived on planet Earth for very long, fiberglass is the itchiest substance known to man. And it'd be itchy at the time, but when you have a shower later on that night, it will be 10 times worse. For the love of God, wear rubber gloves. So stick them on. And then we've got our resin and our fixer. So basically standard resin and or hardener, fixer, whatever you want to call it. And that's the hardener that makes it go hard. So on the dashboard, I have marked out spots. You can hardly see it on the camera, but I've marked out spots here where the cracks are. And so basically I'm just going to strengthen those spots. Unfortunately, all this is pretty shagged. I don't know why it's missing half of those vents. It's like somebody lost their car keys down the front of the dashboard and tried to get it out with a crowbar or something. It's uh yeah, it's real cool. Well done, last owner. Or the owner before then, you never know. You never know who did it. I'm not gonna play the blame game. I got in trouble for that. So, here is our fiberglass matting. We won't need a whole heap of this because it's really just to strengthen it. We're not building stuff out of it. Oh, that went through the rubber glove. That's how shit fiberglass is. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out some strips, approximate length what we need. I'm going to try and do this on camera too. Let's point the camera in the right spot. There we go, there's a strip. Put that over there. My little. <laughs> Okay, so we've done the first little bit of fiberglassing. Now I just want to do the uh, little bit that's closest to the windscreen. It's just a little support there. And then I'm going to let that dry overnight and then we will get on to flocking our dash. Jeez, it sounds filthy. It really isn't. Sounds like something that definitely shouldn't be put on YouTube. So we'll, uh, we'll do that now and then we'll cut to either tomorrow or the day after where we will start doing the flocking. Taking a break today to uh, go to the Geelong Motor Revival, which is a, a pretty sweet car show, although it is a gloomy day. I'm sitting here with my beautiful Sora, waiting for my old man to uh, rock up to go check out some cars. Okay, so we're back. Sorry for the little intermission. Um, it wasn't actually that great an event. Usually they have a really good hill climb event um, off the side. So you sort of go around the Geelong foreshore onto some car parks and stuff. It's really good and they've had some wicked cars out in the past. But uh, they canned it this year because apparently the MG International MG Club and the Jaguar Club were there and therefore they threw money into that instead of making a hill climb course. So yeah, thus there wasn't that much footage. We kind of just watched a bit, got rained on and went home. What can you do? Okay, sarah, sarah. Anyway, we're back at this dashboard. Let's see what we're going to do. Please excuse the poor lighting. I've got the garage door half open, which brings in some pretty wild light from outside. And then we've got big orange lights on the wall. It all sucks. That's why it's better filming at my dad's place. But uh, so we, we filled in, we did the fiberglassing on the back of this and that's actually cured really well. It's really strong, so that's great. So now I've just got the, the old original cracks there. That one's not too bad. This one's 
not quite even. So what I'm gonna do is get a Dremel and I'm just gonna Dremel a little channel uh, where those cracks are and then we're gonna fill it with some body filler. But this is a bumper soft body filler. So it's made for plastic bumpers and stuff. So it's a little bit more flexible. Um, it doesn't just crack like normal body filler. So hopefully that'll work when we're putting this back in the car. It does flex a bit and we won't crack all the body filler. So let's get dremeling. So we've got that, uh, whoa, that's bright, come on camera. So we've got that dremel down and sanded. Down that side, we'll clean it with some uh, wax and grease remover and then we'll do a bit of body filler. dry and uh, once that's dried we'll sand it down and then we're ready to get our flock on. Oh man I'm watching the last round of the various supercars and it's freaking me out. It is an intense race and I'm gonna need CPR after this. So in between um, qualifying and all that sort of stuff we're gonna do our dashboard. So here's where we're up to. We've uh, filled the cracks and done that with the proper bumper buddy sand it all back and we've prepped it. I've put down um, this brown paper because we can save whatever we don't use um, so any excess stuff from the flocking. Um, so I'm going to try and collect it all and we'll save it and also it's easier to clean up. But now we're just going to do a time lapse of me trying to do this. Let's see what happens. So here's our, uh, oh, so here's our flocking dust. It is crazy stuff. It is just like a little really fine powder. It's pretty cool. Guys, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. So far, it's looking pretty good. It just depends how much will stick to the glue, how much will shake off, all that business. Apparently, once it's dry, you can re-glue and re-shake. Um, yeah, cool. I think we just need to wait till it dries and see what happens. I'm going to go watch the rest of the supercars. I will get back to you soon. Scotty won the championship, so stoked. Anyway, back to our dashboard. So I have to leave this for about uh, uh, 24 hours or overnight to fully cure, um, but it's looking pretty good. It's a bit hard to see, and I've still got a lot of the excess stuff on here, so it's looking pretty rough up here. Um, the camera doesn't do it justice, it kind of looks green through the camera, but in real life it looks really good. So, I am stoked. 
We'll see what happens when we shake it all off and blow it off, but I think that's going to turn out pretty good. And it's the next morning. Um, so what I did is I've redone this again. I shook most of it off and there were still patches where it wasn't quite right. I think I didn't put the glue on thick enough. Um, reading a lot of tutorials, they say that you might have to do it a couple of times. The good thing is you can just put a roller over it with the glue and then re-powder it and just keep going until it's all sealed. I think after this one, it should be good. No problem is I've got my bloody dog's hair all through it. Looks like she's coming racing with me. Um, but I'll try and show you some of the bits. See down here, this is what it looked like. It was a bit patchy. But some of the bits that did work, it looked really cool. So I think I'm going to leave the video here. I, I don't want to do these bits. Basically, once that's dry tomorrow, I'll flip over this way, do all these bits and let gravity uh, stick it all to it and give it another go. Um, yeah, but I think I'll finish off the video like that. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this is a little bit of a how to flock a dashboard and you'll see the finished results. I'll post some pictures up on the Facebook page um, or I'll show you in the next video. Thanks for watching.